Good morning. This is Jeff Cameron with the RDIEC and representing Southeast Corner School, School Division. It's my pleasure today to welcome Mrs. Paula Hirschberg. Paula's here today to talk to us uh, all about her new business, Landslide Pottery. With that, I'm going to let uh, Paula take it away. Uh, welcome, Paula, and thank you so much for joining us today. It's, she's all yours. Oh, is he asking me questions? No, you go ahead. Oh, um, well, so I started Landslide Pottery out of a, a hobby, um, a creative hobby love for pottery. And um, I just retired from the school working with Jeff here and decided I needed a creative outlet. And so pottery was my first choice. And that's what I do now. And I, I love it. Yeah. And Paula has here, she has um, some examples of the work that she's done. So she's, I'll just let her go away, go through some of the things that she's done and how she goes about it all. Okay. So I don't know if you're, if you're not familiar with pottery, it's made from clay and um, you can take a simple ball of clay from the ground, from our earth. This is actually made in Medicine Hat, Alberta. And it's a company that I use all the time. Um, there's lots of different clays you can get. I also use one from California. I've bought clays from South Dakota. Um, this particular one today is from Medicine Hat. And you think it's just a little piece of the earth, but it can create beautiful things. And you can make your own dinnerware. You can, um, you know, provide your own home with all the necessities for, for wear that you that you need. So what we do is we take the clay and although it looks like Play-Doh, it's not. Clay has a lot of um, formalities to it, lots of distinct qualities, and it can only be used so much and it, it's fussy. It doesn't like to get too wet or too dry. And anyway, we put this on the wheel and the wheel spins and you, you create a vessel, um, which is very relaxing and uh, you can get in your zen if you need to and you can from that ball of clay you can create uh, different things like here's a mug that I've made um, and with with the clay mugs you can carve you can glaze you can make it your own unique item and then it becomes sort of your trademark if you're going to go into business and um you want to make money at it as a business you create your own distinct style could you show them the bottom there paula just looking at it the bottom yeah i see landslide pottery there yeah so i just made it my own um by doing oh. that when you buy this in a store you're gonna you know know the creator because they always mark the bottom very nice so you can make mugs you can make bowls um you can create your own glaze formations and colors and styles, be as creative as you want to be, which is a really nice option for a business venture um, to be creative and have your own style. You make trays and plates. Um, Beautiful. Things like that you can also make um, decorative items like candle holders or just anything. Could you show that again? I was thinking this was one of your first works of art and it was a coffee <laughs> cup. So I thought maybe it just had a little more work to go with. It. Yeah, you know, oh, it's beautiful. This one is faulty. It's beautiful. <laughs> um, you can also make spoons. So if you wanted to do it as a hobby, you can I see their spoon. You can save money by building your own uh items for your for your kitchen. For the kids out there and even adults, this is the coolest spoon I've ever seen. I honestly <laughs> believe that color and the depth. And yeah, Paula, I I didn't know there was different types of clay. Yes. And uh, so what would the differences be? Like, is it just texture? Or? There's many variations of the clay. There's different, um, you know, some are porcelain clays, some are stoneware clays. They all um, vitrify differently in a kiln. So... Once you make something on the wheel and you have to bisque fire it. So we, I have a kiln as well. And the kiln is the unit that is the stove. It's the cooker. 
and it uh, gets up to 1900 degrees for the first firing bisquare, which is like a, you know, just a rough surface. And then from the bisquare is where you glaze it and then you fire it again in a kiln up to 2200 degrees. And so the clays make a difference in the firings and the quality, um, the, lots of different reasons why you have different kinds of clay. Wow, that's really unbelievable. I didn't realize that. And yeah, you, know, you learn something new every day. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, was just, I was just wondering myself, how, how do you get into it? Like, how did you learn the basics so that you, you know, kind of looks like you, you do some pretty amazing stuff now? Obviously, that probably wasn't, you just didn't wake up one day and start doing that. So how did you get no, that? You're right. I didn't wake up. Um, it takes a long time to learn how to do it with ease, you can sit down and make some crazy things, but I it, it took me about a year to be able to center clay on a wheel um, comfortably. So I took my own, I took lessons in Estevan at the Estevan Pottery Club. And then I just decided I needed to have, have it at home so I could learn daily on my own. So it takes a lot of time and effort to learn. Um, and it's just, it was all, has always been an interest of mine. And yeah, I just sort of watched YouTube videos and dived in myself with self-learning. That's good. And then also equipment, like, so pottery wheel, a kiln, do you have your own kiln? Or yes. You, so is that kind of, if like you do this based from home, I take it, right? And you said? Yes, I, yeah. I so, do. So just, do you have a certain space set aside or do you have a shop or how do you, how do you have it set up? Yeah. Um, first, when I got my my wheel and my kiln, I had it in my basement and I had a little room sectioned off in there and you have to, um, oh, the kiln had to be upstairs because it has to be vented out and has a certain um, electrical outlet it needs. And then we built a garage onto our house and my husband allowed me some space out there. And <laughs> I now have a little studio right in our garage, which is attached to our house. And I just love it it's easy and accessible what would be the biggest advice you'd like to offer to the high school students out there um my advice for pottery if you wanted to go into business because i feel like that's what we're talking about here is business um just start go get some lessons and, and see if it's for you if it's something you love and you're passionate about um and then go from there. It's a very inexpensive uh, way to start a business. Like under $5,000, you can get your kiln and a wheel and some clay and start to make your products, you know, and then sell them. You can go to, you sell on Instagram now, like online. You can sell at trade shows. You can sell in people's stores, like lots of stores that sell um, home crafted items or things like that. So just go and try things, try pottery that's offered at universities a lot. I wish I had a pottery class in school because that would have been up my alley, but um, in university, you have that option and, and just try it. And it's hard, but don't give up. Yeah. Well, that's great advice. And you know what? Uh, I know my wife just got back from Mexico and she brought my grandkids home some toys and they were all earth made um, from the wood and just natural. And uh, I think we lose touch a little bit uh, with our past. And uh, to me, looking at those toys, one was a, a wooden top. It was just, uh, it just kind of hit home to me how, how unique and how beautiful it really was. And this with the, you're making all of these beautiful dishes and um, you know, just, all of the various things you have here, the spoons, the bowls, the cups, the, the decorative candle holder, and that beautiful, uh, um, what would you call tray. it? Just a tray, yeah. I was going to say plate, but yeah. obviously it's not. A, <laughs> yeah, but no, it's just something that, you know, the world's going at such a fast pace that we can get back a little bit. And so many things are such beautiful when they, when they come from the earth. So, wow, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, and, and handcrafted, like something that so somebody's personal touch goes into it. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't all, you know, factory manufactured and all done the same. Every every piece is unique, and that, that's kind of that's what's kind of neat about pottery too. 
Uh, it's a, a question, Paula, too. Like, just I'm curious sometimes, like, how long, let's say, a coffee cup, how much time from start to finish does it take for something like that? Well, that's a good question because people think you can just take your clay and make a mug in a minute, like in, in a short time. But to be honest, it takes about three weeks to get one product. Oh, could you just hold that there a little longer? And as you talk, I'll just hold it and you just look <laughs> at the detail, like in the handle parts, beautiful and see inside there. So to build it, to build that, like I said, you build it on, on the wheel and that doesn't take that long once you've mastered it, then it has to dry. For, so the product has to dry for about a week or more so that it's completely water free to be able to be bisque fired. So then it gets that firing for 24 hours. And then from there you glaze it and it takes three coats of glaze per item. And then you wait till those are dry and you fire it again for another 24 hours. So I say two to three weeks, depending on how long, what you've made and how long it takes for that water to be dried up in that vessel, because you cannot fire it in that much heat with any water in it. So it has to be dry. So it takes anywhere from a week to two weeks to get complete, to be able to be fired. And then after the firing, it goes, you know, in so as I you make 24 hours, but so as like you 48. Make, so as you make something, it's like then you let or while it's drying, you're you know, in the, maybe in the process of making something else, it's kind of a continuum kind of thing that way. Yeah. So you sit down and make a whole bunch of things as much as you want to make at a time, and then you dry them all. And I work so that I have a kiln full each time. So I say one product, but it takes, you know, you can do up to 25 things in a kiln or more yeah so. i suppose with the electric electricity if it's it's fired up and heating you might as well yeah uh, having more things in there yeah it makes sense yeah yeah and uh of course you have if you look at the lines going down very creative and and the blue and the brown and i know i just know myself i've never been a big coffee drinker but my wife's got me into drinking coffee and Lately, I like to have a brownish type coffee cup in, in the morning and I look through all the cups and I'm not sure why that is, but- uh, Because it they, matters what you drink your coffee at. Okay, I never do that. Yes, it does. <laughs> do you have any more questions, Kevin? Or? Uh, no, that's that's awesome. I just think it's a, it's, a, it's a neat industry that we don't really spend much time thinking about or knowing about, but yet uh, you see it out there and you, you, you forget about the, the time and love that goes into all those pieces. It's awesome, but well done. Yeah. But so on, on behalf of uh, the RDIC and Southeast Cornerstone, Mrs. Hersberg, I'd just like to thank you so much for uh, showing us what you really love. And it's a good thing to follow, kids. If you're passionate about something, remember, it really doesn't feel like work because you're passionate about it and love what you're doing. Thanks again, Paula. Well, thank you for having me. Yes. Take care. All right.